What's good y'all? Welcome back to another video and in this video I'm going to be giving you my review of the anime fall 2022 season. I know this is coming out probably a little bit later than it should have but it is what it is. I fell behind. I had to play some catch up but you know that's going to be what's happening here. So before we get into the video if you have not already please be sure to subscribe to the channel as well as hit that notification bell to get notified for more content that I put out. As well if you end up enjoying this video be sure to hit me with a like and leave a comment and let me know your thoughts. So, without any further ado, let's just get into it, y'all. So, listen, the fall 2022 anime season was absolutely insane. Honestly, all of 2022 was pretty elite, but fall really had some doozies. There's some things that we loved, and there's some things that was just meh. A lot of uh, continuations of other seasons and a lot of things that premiered this time around. So, Let's get into the first series on the list. There's no alphabetical order and there's also no release date thing. This is just gonna be happening how it's happening. It's not from least to favorite, just, we're just going. Let's go. Let's go. Okay, first off, let's start with Mobile Suit Gundam, Witch from Mercury. Oh man, this was really, really pleasant. I mean, the prologue was absolutely elite. It made me feel things I wasn't even ready for for this. Now. This is Gundam, so it does deal with, you know, kids somewhat being involved in government type issues and war crimes and has your usual Gundam tropes of like, you know, Earth and colonization of space and people from Earth being treated less than and the Earth just being mistreated, you know, life. But the main character, Suleta, is really charming and just easy to root for, as well as the beautiful animation this series has and great fight scenes. Now, the setting is in a school, so from time to time, this could feel a little, you know, slice of lifey, you know, school days type things, but it's not that bad. So, if you're not in it for that, that may just be a drawback for you. Overall, I can give this a 7 out of 10. Next up, we got Do It Yourself. That was kind of cringe. Yeah, next up, we have Do It Yourself, which... <laughs> Honestly, I had no idea why I enjoyed this series. I found this show entertaining through and through. It is very, very basic. The premise of the show is in the name. So I'm gonna let you know right now, I'm giving this a six, but even though this is a six, it's just good old cute girls doing cute things. It's a bunch of young women in a school club. It's a bunch of young women in the school club trying to get more members to join so that their school club doesn't get shut down and they have to get it done, you know, before the semester ends. So it's basically about the journey of young women coming into their own, learning how to build things for themselves with, you know, supplies. But no, seriously, if you actually want to learn how to do some DIY projects, this show can really give you some cute ideas. But I won't lie, it's so slow. I find myself just hamming it on and not really being present for it. There are just moments that it's just like, come on, let's 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 wrap this up. Let's get to where this needs to be. But I will say, there's a character, Joboko. She's like this uh, American character. So every now and then she speaks some English and it's it's pretty, pretty funny. It's pretty cute, I'm not gonna lie. So yeah, like I said, overall, Do It Yourself gets a six out of 10 from me. Oh my <sighs> so next thing we have is Two Year Eternity. Okay, this show continues to give me all the feels. I, I just, it just finds a way to bring emotion out of you. And it really is more of the same of what season one offered. Now I will say the only downfall I had this time around with this scene is that the characters I didn't get the same connection on in regards to our first season characters. And I know I get it. This is, you know, supposed to be developed more into the series and we're not getting to be connected with as many people. We're staying more set in, you know, certain timelines or certain parts of the timeline itself. It's, it's just, I don't know. It really hit last season. It was just like a lot more emotional. Granted, it's still emotional. I'm not saying it's not. And there's some cool moments. It's just that the knockers themselves just, because they don't speak and don't really have personalities, it can get a little, eh, like kind of the least interesting part as of now. I mean, I'm still looking forward to To Your Eternity season three, and you know, I'm still here for the ride. So overall, I can give this a seven out of 10. Okay, let's just get it out the way now. We know what people are here for. 
We know. So, Chainsaw Man, the heavy hitter, the Don Dada, the thing of all things that are things. The first few episodes were really strong. I was into it immediately and invested in the world. Now, I will say this, because it's done by MAPPA, which is the same studio as Jujutsu Kaisen, I don't know if I even said that right. I may have studied while I said Jujutsu, but so be it, we get, we're still going, we're still going. Um, you know, you get Jujutsu Kaisen vibes. I wouldn't knock anybody for saying that they feel that way. The story's completely different, but the animation can make you feel that way. But even though the beginning was really strong, this, the middle portion just, it kind of lost me a little bit. It got a little boring. I'm not saying it was uninteresting, but I wasn't as engaged in the first part. You know, just the funny moments, the lightheartedness, the absolute chaos and gore. I don't know. Middle season just wasn't it for me. But by the time you got to the end, whew, that ended on a high note. And I'm very, very, very interested to see how far the story goes from here. I'm debating on reading it. I don't know. It depends. Sometimes I just like, you know, how high quality a certain animation is these days. And I'd rather wait for it to see it get animated. But I mean, fire intro, you know, hit the dun, 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 you know, hit one of those. Like the, the intro was fire. And the fact that there was a different outro for every song, absolutely impressive. Absolutely impressive. Jujutsu Kaisen, easily an 8 out of 10 for me. But where's Pochita? Pochita coming back? I mean, I'm just saying, like, I feel like we got introduced to something mad kawaii and they didn't give it to us. Little hurt, little hurt, but you know, still self not seven out of 10, seven out of 10. I said seven out of 10, I mean eight out of 10. <laughs> my bad. Next up, we got Bleach, the thousand year blood war arc. I'm gonna let you know right now, I'm giving this a nine out of 10. It is what it is, that's just where I lie. And honestly, I'm just happy for Bleach fans. I'm very, very happy for you. I've not been a Bleach naysayer, but out of the big three, Bleach is the last one I got into. And wow, wow. So I watched all of Bleach, but I never read. I do know spoilers. I do know some little details with the end. You know, there's certain parts that just, I knew was coming, but wow. The animation for this, the the fluidity of the fights, the the impact and like the, the amount of, the, where the story is going right now and how the anime just found a way to really just bring that out. Ah, uh, it's just, it's clean. It's clean. Like you cannot front on Thousand Year Blood War arc for Bleach at this point. If you've been a Bleach hater, you gotta, you gotta get the Bleach fans they flowers and I'm happy for y'all. Y'all deserve this. Like y'all really, really did deserve this. And I'm just looking forward to where we're going with the story. I cannot wait for the second part. Things like this make you wish like, uh, can we get like a Naruto Kai maybe? I mean, whatever, fine. I'm being humble. At least, you know, at least Naruto anime ended and we don't do Boruto. We don't talk about Boruto. Oh, I'm sorry. I shouldn't be singing. My bad. But yeah, overall, Bleach, Thousand Year Blow Art, 9 out of 10. Next up, we got the Kawaii of all Kawaii Spy Family Part 2 of Season 1. Oh, that's another thing to talk about. Let's not even get into the Attack on Titan situation. Ah, that ain't going on to that. Oh yeah, Spy Family. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Everybody loves Spy Family. Like, it's kind of hard to hate on this show. It gives you more of what you got in the first part. But if you know are watching this and didn't see my first part of it, it's cute. I love it. I love Anya. I love what the Forges are doing. And, you know, at some parts, I did feel a little uninterested. Not going to lie. But I never felt like the episode was dragging. I always wanted more. Every episode that comes to an end, I'm always like, this is it? We done already? Now there's some points that I space out in the middle of the episode, I'm not gonna lie to you, but I was all, I never felt like it was 23 minutes that just passed by so quickly. I don't know how that happened. I don't know how that ended up being a thing, but I really enjoy Spy Family. It's just fun. It's cute. And uh, yeah, it's just a joy to see on screen. So Spy Family is an eight out of 10 for this part. <sighs> Next up, we got Mob Psycho season three, the finale of Mob Psycho. Why nobody told me? I had no idea that this would be the final season of Mob Psycho. So when I watched this, and by the time it got to like episode like nine and like I was just like stunned and shot was episode nine episode eight I think it's episode eight bruh spoiler alert if you haven't watched Mob Psycho, Mob Psycho season three but when Mob got hit by the car I almost thought for a second I was like oh my god is this series about to commit to killing Mob and I was like oh it's about to end right here I'm like oh my god that would be the most tragic respectful thing I would ever see I would probably accept it 
But I'm so happy that wasn't the case. I am so happy that wasn't the case. And Mob Psycho season three was an absolute delight. I'm sad it's gone. I'm sad it's done. But I just think that all three seasons is an absolute joy to see. And it's just a strong, you know, kind of representation of not seeing too much craziness of a, a child or a young teenager, preteen, having, you know, not crazy hopes and dreams, not something like overly unrealistic, but just a character who's just trying to grow and become a better person. It's, it's really, really powerful stuff. But also the animation and the fight scenes in here, like that dimple fight or that final part what happened with like mob near the end, like absolutely insane. It's just like, whew, some heat, some heat, those animation scenes. Some of the most fluid things I've ever seen out of Studio Bones, Studio Bones. Studio Bones. It's almost like the animation went to Mob Psycho and not something else on this list. But we'll get to that. So overall, I'm giving Mob Psycho season three a nine out of 10. Sayonara, Mob. So with Studio Bones being talked about, let's talk about something else. Let's talk about something really closely related. My Hero Academia. So listen. I read the manga for my hero, so I shall keep my opinions on that to myself. This is simply about the anime, but man. So I'll say this, what's happening isn't bad. Like, it's interesting, it's hype actually, but it's just not hitting. You know what I mean? Like, it's not perfectly executed. Not saying all things have to be perfect. Like, I get it, these studios have to work and I put all respect on how much work that they have to go through to make these things happen. Like, listen, I could not animate anything a day in my life. I can barely edit these YouTube videos. But you know what I think it is? And I hate to do this. I really am not usually the manga versus anime guy. Just watch it or read it how you want to. Like. Manga's not for everybody and sometimes anime is just too slow paced and everybody has a preference. But the manga does it better. And it's weird. And it's not that, you know, they're not doing the scenes. I mean, granted, there are past seasons of My Hero Academia that just look way better than this season. But the dark tones that you get and how gritty certain things look in the manga because of, and this is not the anime's fault, it's kind of is because I know that's the coloring of the characters, but you can't get that with how bright everything is in the in the anime. It's not changing styles, you know what I mean? I, we, we see One Piece consistently change styles right now and that's something that comes out weekly. Some episodes look completely different than others and some fights just look completely different than others. And I feel like, what's the risk in doing that here? I know Studio Bones are the ones doing it all the way through, so it's consistency, but Maybe get a different animation staff to this or a different, I don't know, uh, some contractors. Or so, I don't know how it works, so I apologize. But just another you know, way to watch it or another style of it would be really, really helpful, I think. Now, I pray the second half does something very, very different in style. You know, so far this video is coming out halfway through the season, but man, where the second half goes, I hope the anime finds a way to does it justice. Does it justice? Do it justice. But like I said, granted, I'm not an animator and um, I put all respect on what you guys do, on what they do, and you know, I do appreciate it and I could never, I could never. It's just, you know, maybe the studio direction, I'll blame. Overall, I can give my hero a respectful six or seven out of 10. It's a seven out of 10. I'm not gonna like knock it that hard. This is a seven out of 10. Next up, we have Udase Yatsura. Hopefully I said that right, but whew, this was jokes. I had no idea this would be absolutely hilarious, bro. Like I've seen images of Lum before, but like because I've never seen the original, you know, the old school anime of this, and this is my first, you know, introduction to this series, Lum is probably like top three waifu. Like she might be best girl all the way through honestly like ugh, the main character he's annoying he's funny he's perverted but it's not too over the top but like also this is comedic so i get it what is his name let me look at it real quick give me one second what is his name Ataru. <laughs> yo whatever he's funny he's interesting but man he just don't know what he got in lum bro he is just taking that for granted there are moments that it tugs on your heartstrings and you feel something like will they is this a will they won't they but it's just absolutely funny. It's, 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 the gags are, are fun. They're, it's just really, really mature fun. And it's something I really, really enjoyed. So overall, I can give this an eight out of 10. Next up, we got Blue Lock. Blue Lock. 
I'm an egoist. So I went into this knowing nothing about soccer, football, whatever you want to call it, you know, depending on where you're from. I respect football, I respect it, but you know, soccer may come out my mouth another time in this, you know, review. But imagine soccer combined with like squid game stuff, like a squid game vibe. This is absolutely insane. I, I'm a soccer fan now. I get it, I understand. Granted, I'm not saying this taught me everything. I know what a striker is, but <laughs> this was entertaining. I mean, like, I like Haikyuu a lot, but this just like, this really gave me like the chills with certain moments. Just like the way that it's animated and just like the music for it bangs. The only thing I will say that's a downfall is that the main character, who I sometimes can't even remember his name half the time, He's kind of the least interesting part. I'm not saying he's a bad main character, but the other characters he's competing against to just become, you know, Team Japan striker, just seem a lot more interesting. And maybe that's just by design. They want him to just look regular. So I get the point. But man, this combined with me watching this and Ted Lasso and like the World Cup happening, I get it. Now I just gotta find a club one day we'll see how that goes overall i'm giving blue lock a nine out of ten next up we got another you know cute girls doing cute things and that's so she the rock but i call this the deluxe and this is cute girl doing cute things the deluxe simply because it is so much more than that it is absolutely it had so much personality this show really went there for something such so simple like typical girl with anxiety issues trying to come out her shell and start a rock band and cute girls doing cute things and things of cute girls doing cute things it took a lot it took a lot of risk and it was good and just like a lot of references and it just understood what it was the comedy was just good i can see that if you have anxiety issues maybe this might be triggering for you so i understand that point i'm not knocking it but Bro, this is this is absolutely hilarious. Bochy the Rock is fire. I truly enjoyed it. The music was cool. It wasn't anything crazy, you know. It was it wasn't like hitting like your boy Kong Ming. You know? But this gave me a new appreciation for like you know music genre anime. I never seen K on, but you know. I did that stupid dance just now to your boy Kong Ming, so I seen that. So I'm interested to try some other things. But come on, there's even a Dragon Ball like Z Yamcha reference after he got blew up from the Cybermen. Like, if you haven't watched this, please do, please do. Bochi the Rock, eight out of ten. Actually, I take that back. Nine out of ten. Watch it, please. Next up, how did we get here? How did we end up here? Akiba made war. This was pure mindless chaos. I enjoyed it. It was interesting. Wasn't prepared, but it was interesting. I don't remember a single character's name, but it was interesting. It's absurd. There's just violence all over the place. Most of the time I feel like nothing's happened, but it's pure chaos and it's interesting. Being absurd and hilarious, while there's just pure violence and just gore happening, it's interesting. I don't know how they pulled this off because the episode took such a turn after episode one, I just wasn't prepared. It was interesting. Maid cafes, but the maids are kind of like the Yakuza, and that's how they're treated in Japan. Very interesting. I'll give it a seven out of 10. Next, we got the villainous taming the demon lord or whatever, I'm the villainous taming the demon lord. Isekai, here we go. I have no idea why I watched this. It seemed a little interesting after episode one. There's some interesting dynamics. But it's just so like inconsequential. I don't know what it is. I just, I stuck through it because after I passed the first three episodes, I was like, well, I'm in too deep now. So I might as well see how this season ends just so I can do this video eventually, but. What are you doing? Digging. Why? Well, you know why. How deep are you going? I don't know. How deep do you think it is? Pretty deep. I'm good. It has some kawaii moments and, you know, there's some fake big brain moments for the character, but like, I'm good. This is a three out of 10. Next up, we have Eminence 
of the shadow or in the shadow. And I don't know how I ended up here with another isekai. I was catfished. I was seeing images all over the internet, hyping this series up, putting it up there as if like, oh, this was the best episode of anime that aired this week. Like I put like number three on the list or number four, like just in the top tens, like another isekai. I got got. And the first episode don't even let you think this is the isekai. It just seemed like, oh, maybe this kid is just, you know, nice and gonna find a way to be a vigilante in the real world. And no, that's not what it is because at the little last minute of the episode <laughs> Boom truck coon truck coon comes out of nowhere, but I will say this though It is an isekai though. It does the isekai things It knows it's self-aware. It's funny. It's not like as self-aware as some other things that just you know rag on the isekai trope but it is, it, it's funny. I like what it's doing here. It's not bad. Um, I wouldn't rush anybody to go watch it, but there's just some interesting concepts and self-awareness of how silly, you know, the main character is and just things just happen to work out for him somehow. Like it just makes fun of all isekai pro tags with the pro tag, you know, you know what I mean? Overall, it's a five out of 10. Next up, we have Shinobi no Itoki and... <sighs> okay, so imagine Naruto. Now imagine getting an anime set kind of in the time of where Boruto takes place, which is kind of in the future of the ninja world in Naruto. Um, and, you know, ninja technology is a thing. Now you bring it in a little bit more grounded, bring it into the real world, and imagine the anime being strictly about the, the politicking that goes on between the villages to keep peace and existing more in the shadows of it rather than just being like out in the open and being completely glorified. And you know, you just kind of see the, you know, ongoing power struggle and endless cycle of violence that happens. It, you know, it hones in on those ideas of Naruto, but it's just like a lot of dialogue and a lot of politicking. This is that, sounds cool, sound like it could be funny not funny but interesting really really interesting because that would be you know that would give the same similarity to naruto and i would love to know more about the politicking of the world with those characters and that's the problem here i don't give a damn about these characters i don't remember any of their names somehow this was so boring there are moments that have flashes of action but it goes from like being really interested in that first episode it hooks you it hooks you into being like oh shit, this is about ninjas i mean i know it's in the name but it's about ninjas and then it turns into like slice of life school stuff with like the politics can happen in the background. This is just not it. Like the characters were just boring. The dialogue was just meaningless. Just like nothing felt, just, it just somehow they made it completely boring. And maybe, maybe that's not what I want on Naruto. Maybe it would be completely boring. But I just like even the characters, if they would have been just better written, this would have made this better. Granted, thank God this is just like a only one season thing. But like I said, I never cared what happened to anybody in the show. So this is a four out of 10, I guess. Yeah. Next up, we got another isekai, but this one actually, it's kind of kawaii. And that's reincarnated as a sword. Okay, so this ain't bad. I'm gonna give it a six. I enjoyed it. And that's not because of the protagonist. I could care less about the protagonist. The protagonist does get reincarnated as a sword, but the person who carries this show is Fran, and we gotta protect Fran at all costs. You hear me? No Fran hate. No, no, no. No Fran hate, no, no, no. But for the simple fact alone that I absolutely love her character and I could just, I just wanna see her do great and just become strong and just thrive in this world. Yeah, I'm in. I like Fran, that, that's everything for me. Everything else around, it's not that interesting. There are some interesting fight scenes, but nothing that's gonna blow you away. It's isekai, isekai, you know, people having their stats and power levels and checking their moves and all types of things like that. Like the main character, Sword Dude, who cares? Who cares about him? Just me rooting for Fran alone made this absolutely enjoyable and I'll give it a six out of 10. See, a humble six, like I said. And the last thing we have up is Welcome to Demon School Irumakun season Four. Is it season four? I think it's season four. But yeah, so I'm gonna say what I usually say about this series. I think I've reviewed this series before on video. I'm not sure, but here we are. I'm on season four of the series. I've been watching it since it came out and I'm just in too deep. I enjoy it. It's mindless kind of fun. 
it's not super funny but it's fun it's funny it's just like low stakes but also has kind of high stake because like it is kind of messed up it's like an isekai but not really like if you've never seen this series but this is what it's about it's about iruma who is just this very very jolly boy very jolly boy and his parents are trash and sell him basically child traffic him to a demon and said demon decides hey i'm gonna be a grandpa now and you're gonna go to school here in the demon world and now you have to act like you are not a human so people don't eat you so just try to be low-key live your life be happy love you but then you know you just become the reluctant hero who just somehow just keeps on failing up kind of like somebody from one piece but yeah you just try to be low-key but you somehow just you know things work out for you that's a rumor cool it's okay and at this point, you know, I just want to see if he becomes the Demon King. That's all. So I'm still here for it. It's a six out of 10. It's not bad. So boom, that is it for, you know, this review of 420. Why did I do that? Why was that? Why would you do that? That wasn't a TikTok. This is not a TikTok. Why would you do that? I'm sorry. <laughs> so yeah, that's it for my review of all the anime I watched for the fall 2022 season. So we'll end the video here, but if you haven't already, please be sure to subscribe to the channel as well as hit that notification bell to get notified for more content that I put out. As well, if you end up enjoying this video, be sure to hit me with a like and leave a comment and let me know your thoughts. So on that note, y'all, enjoy your life. I'm feeling great and feel the vibe. I'm really grateful we alive. And I'm feeling great cause lately I've been on the way to something great And I'm feeling like cause I create like every day and I'm on today